Hey guys, I'm going to be sharing with you my recipe for a soft, fluffy, and flavorful hot cross buns. No better time of year than to share this recipe, so let's go ahead and get started. In my bowl here, I have a mixture of some milk and water. I heated this up in the microwave for about a minute so it's nice and hot and to that I'm going to go ahead and add in some shortening. I want the shortening to melt into the milk and the water. Just most of it melted but we really want to make sure that this shortening with the milk and water cools down to at least body temperature when you touch it. Make sure that the least body temperature before we add in our yeast. So I'm going to go ahead and add in a teaspoon of granulated sugar as well as a packet of yeast when it has cooled down a little so it's nice and warm still but it's not hot so it kills your yeast if your milk mixture is too hot your it will kill your yeast so make sure that it's at least body temperature by touching it to make sure it's not too hot so go ahead and just mix that around set that aside for about five minutes let the yeast activate and our dry ingredients are some all-purpose flour some granulated sugar I have some ground cinnamon, ground nutmeg, and ground allspice, as well as some salt. Now I'm going to go ahead and make sure and mix all my dry ingredients really well so that all those spices get incorporated into my flour. I don't want to have a chunk of spices in one corner. I just want to make sure everything is incorporated really well. So go ahead and mix that up. And of course, guys, all the amounts will be listed below in the description box. So into the center of my bowl, I made a little well with my spoon. I'm going to go ahead and add in my milk, water, shortening with my sugar, and my yeast, as well as some vanilla extract. And I'm going to go ahead with one large egg. I'm going to go ahead with my spoon and start to break up the egg and mix everything in together and slowly incorporate the flour just until everything starts coming together and mixed together. Just continue mixing that around until most of that flour is incorporated together with the liquid. Once most of it is incorporated, I'm going to go ahead and toss this over into my clean surface. And we're going to go ahead and knead this for about five to eight minutes. Toss it over into my surface and we're going to just start bringing it together to make sure everything comes together. And then we're just going to start kneading it. Super simple, super easy. And this is such a perfect dough to work with. It's so soft and so fluffy. It's amazing. So just bring in all of the flour and I'm going to use the back of my wrist here. And I'm going to start at the center of my dough and I'm going to gently push out and bring it back in. Turn my dough push out again, bring it back in, and turn. Now you really don't want to push too hard on this dough because what can happen is you may think you need extra flour, it may start to get a little too sticky, but you really should not need any extra flour on this dough at this point. Um, so just go ahead and knead this for about five to eight minutes, being gentle when you're pushing on it. And just incorporate all the bits and pieces that are on the counter as well. And I'm starting again in the center of my dough and I'm pushing out and bringing it back in. And I'm continue doing that and turning my dough as I'm going. And just continue to do that for five to eight minutes. And this dough is going to be super soft and really smooth. And just, it's going to be an amazing hot cross buns. So I'm just going to continue doing that for about eight minutes or so. When you start press, when you press on your dough, you'll see that it springs back up. That's your indication that your kneading is almost done. It's pretty much almost done. Just going to give this a couple more minutes or so. And when my kneading is done, I'm just going to form this into a nice little bowl. And I have a bowl that I have sprayed with nonstick cooking spray. You can also use some vegetable oil and brush it on the bowl just to make sure nothing sticks. I'm going to go ahead and place my little dough bowl into my bowl. I want to... I want to move it around in the bowl, make sure all sides are coated with that nonstick cooking spray or vegetable oil. And then we're going to cover this up with some cling wrap and place this in a warm area, draft-free area, to rise for about 45 minutes or so till it's doubled in size. 
I like to also do is cover the cling wrap with a towel to make sure that no air is getting in there and it's nice and snug and warm and it will double in size. So I'm going to go ahead and wait for that. After about 45 minutes to an hour, we're going to go ahead and remove our cling wrap and towel. Our dough is nicely risen. I'm going to go ahead and sprinkle on one tablespoon of flour on my surface. Just spread that around. And then plop my dough on to my surface. Now we're going to go ahead and flatten our dough out with our hands just until it's about a half of an inch thick. Just about a half of an inch thick. We're going to go ahead and grate in the zest of an orange. And then after I've grated in that zest, I'm going to cut, spread it on my dough. Spread it around on my dough. And then I'm going to go ahead and add in some currants. Now you can use a dried fruit mix with this, dried fruit peel as well. I'm just using currants here. And if you can't even find currants, go ahead and use raisins. Now raisins are a little bit bigger than currants. So it might be a little bit harder to knead into the dough. But just go ahead and use what you've got. But I'm using currants here. Now I'm spreading my currants out throughout my dough as evenly as I could. And I'm just going to go ahead and start folding my dough. I'm just going to fold it in half and quarters just to make sure everything is enclosed inside of there. So fold it up like so and then I'm just going to go ahead and knead this again for about two to three minutes until all of those currants and the orange zest gets incorporated throughout the dough and spreads evenly throughout the dough as best as possible. So just knead it for about two minutes, two to three minutes until everything is incorporated. Just going to continue kneading that. And then after about two to three minutes, I'm just going to form it back into a little ball. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's going back into the same bowl that I have used earlier that was already sprayed with nonstick cooking spray. If any of your raisins or currants or anything falls out, just stick it back in the dough. Put it back in the bowl, cover it up with cling wrap and your towel again. Place it in that warm area to rise again for another 45 minutes or so. After that extra time that we've given it to rise again, the, the flavors just infuse into the dough and it's amazing. So we're going to just plop our dough out our, to our surface and we're going to sort of form this into a log as best as possible. I'm not trying to deflate my dough any too much here. I'm just trying to form it into a little log. And I'm, I'm going to get eight hot cross buns out of this. So I'm just going to roll this in and then I'm going to cut it in half. And each half I'm going to get four pieces out of it. So I'm going to work with one half at this time and roll that more into a log so all my pieces are as even as possible. Now this is homemade and I don't have a scale and I'm not going to go ahead and measure. If you want to measure to make sure everything is exactly the same, you can definitely do that. But I'm just going to form this as best as possible, as even as possible, and get four little buns out of each half. So I cut that three times to get four buns. So now I'm going to take a part that I've cut here and I'm going to start tucking the ends into the center. And just rolling as I'm tucking it into the center, I'm going to pinch the bottom when it turns into a nice little ball. Pinch the bottom and just roll it in my hands until it's nice and round like a nice little ball, nice little roll that we've got there. And place this on my baking tray that is lined with parchment paper. I'm going to show you again here. I'm going to take one of my pieces that I've cut. If anything falls out, stick it back in there. You're good to go. I'm just going to tuck it into the center and try to make a little round ball with it. And pinching the bottom as I'm going. And then I'm going to roll this into a nice little ball. And place it about an inch apart from each other on your baking tray. I'm just going to continue doing that with all of my pieces. Now my other half here, I'm going to do the same thing. Cut it three times, get four pieces. Tuck it into the center, pinching the bottom as I'm going. Make a nice little roll. And just roll it with my hands. And place these all about an inch apart. So when they do rise again, they kind of uh, get close to each other and they come stuck to each other. So when they bake, they're nice and just 
You can easily peel them apart. Now we're going to cover this again for another 30 to 45 minutes or so to let this double in size. And again, the extra proofing and the extra time that we're giving this, the flavors are just going to be even more incredible. So place that in a warm area and let's get started on our crosses. We're going to have some flour here, just some regular all-purpose flour. And to that, I'm going to add in some water. We're just going to mix this up until it becomes a really nice smooth paste. Now my hot cross buns, I'm doing it the traditional way with the crosses, but I'm also giving you the way that how I, most people like it as well with a little bit of that icing sugar flavor, the confectioner sugar flavor. So we're gonna go ahead and do the traditional way and then later on we're just gonna add that flavor on. So into my piping bag here, you can also use a Ziploc bag. I'm gonna place that into a glass and once my flour and water mixture is nice and smooth, like a nice smooth paste, don't really have any lumps of flour in there or anything, I'm just going to pour this into my Ziploc bag. Now I have not cut the tip off as yet, and you don't want to cut the tip off until you pour in your flour and water mixture. So after I've done that, I'm just going to set this aside and get my rolls out. I usually put them in the microwave, so if the microwave is off, but it's such a nice warm area that it really does give it some time to rise. These are beautiful. I'm going to remove my cling wrap. And then I'm tilting my bag upward so when I cut it my flour does not just go everywhere. So cut the tip off about a quarter of an inch and I'm going to start at the end of my roll here. I'm doing it lengthways. So I'm going to start here and just glide my flour and water mixture over my rolls reach the other side and just continue on. I'm not actually touching the rolls when I'm doing this, but the flour and mixture is just gliding on top of it, just like so. You're just letting that drop onto your rolls. I'm going to turn my pan around, and then I'm going to go ahead and do the other side to make our crosses. Again, I'm not actually touching the dough with this. I'm just letting it glide on it. And it does not have to be perfect. My oven is already preheated to 375 degrees. And these are going to bake for about 30 to 35 minutes or so. You really do want to check on them about 30 minutes or so until the top gets a really nice golden brown color to it. Finish that up. And these are going to go into my oven to bake for about 30 to 35 minutes. Every oven is different, so you can check on it around 30 minutes. Now let's get started on making our glaze for the topping. There are two different glazes that I'm going to show you. We're going to start off with some granulated sugar in a saucepan and I'm going to add in equal parts of water. I'm going to turn my heat on to medium and I'm just going to give this a stir just until all of that kind of gets incorporated. And all we're doing is just putting the heat on just for the, flat, just for the sugar to be dissolved into the water. So give it a nice mix and just wait for the sugar to be dissolved and then turn your heat off and let it cool. Now the second glaze I'm going to share with you is more of the way how I like it with that little bit of confectioner powdered sugar flavor to it. So I have some powdered sugar here in my bowl and to that I'm going to add in some water. And again I'm just going to stir this until all that powdered sugar is dissolved into the water and it becomes a nice thin glaze. And all the amounts guys will be listed below in the description box. Now the first sugar, granulated sugar and water mixture that we made, we're going to glaze the hot cross buns when they've come out of the oven. We're going to glaze it with that so it gets a beautiful nice shine to it. And what I like to do is finish it off with a little bit of that confectioner sugar and water mixture. So you get that little bit of extra sweetness that I like on my hot cross buns. And these are done. They're super soft. They are fluffy. They are flavorful with the orange zest running through it and all those spices. They are so amazingly good. They are delicious. They are super easy to make. I hope that you guys give this recipe a try. I hope that you enjoy this recipe. All the amounts, again, will be listed below in the description box for you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like share and subscribe and I will see you guys next time. Bye bye!